Saturn's largest moon Titan has been attracting attention for a long time. This is an unusual and exceptional world in the entire solar system, having a substantial atmosphere, as well as liquid on the surface in the form of rivers, lakes and seas, however, consisting not of water, like the seas on Earth, but of liquid hydrocarbons. Methane and Ethane There is a good chance that the chemical composition of Titan's atmosphere is very similar to the one that was on the surface at the time when it appeared on our planet. If it turns out that the current chemical processes taking place on Titan support prebiological chemistry similar to that which accompanied the development of life on Earth, then by studying Titan, we will be able to study the deep past of our planet and, perhaps, better understand how life on Earth adapted. Today it has become clear that many of the tasks of exploring the seas of Titan can only be done by a deep-sea bathyscaphe. Therefore, a space submarine with a high degree of probability can replace any floating platform. Well, let's start our sci-fi dive into the wonderful world of Titan. But a little preface. Our descent to the surface of the sea will be carried out by means of a parachute, the most logical way for a planet with an atmosphere. However, this is not the only option for delivering a submarine. Due to its shape, for the delivery of a submarine to Titan, it may be necessary to use a winged spacecraft capable of withstanding the hypersonic speed of entering the satellite's atmosphere, maximum descent above the surface of the Kraken Sea and dropping the submarine in a special protective capsule. After checking all the systems, the submarine will be able to begin its research. Of course, it is equipped with a number of specialized tools and technologies. In addition, it should be noted that due to the great distance from the Earth, the submarine will operate at a very high level of autonomy. So this is not an easy lander. For example, a nuclear submarine designed to work in oceans with salt water on Earth will not be able to withstand the extremely low temperatures and pressures that exist on Titan. There is a high probability that it will detonate or be crushed like an egg. Unfortunately, Solar panels, which are widely used at present for less distant flights, will not work either. They cannot be used even after surfacing due to the foggy atmosphere of the satellite and the long distance to the sun. One of the most serious problems that needs to be solved by the designer of a space submarine is its energy supply. From the layman's side, the situation probably looks absurd swim in the sea of hydrocarbons and search for energy at the same time. However, an oxidizer is required to release energy from the titanium alloy. On Earth, its role is oxygen, which is too little on Titan. Therefore, we will have to postpone diesel generators to the last century and look for other solutions. For example, the use of a new power system called the Stirling Radioisotope Generator, which provided the most efficient extraction of energy from plutonium-238. The Stirling thermogenerator itself is a device that converts thermal energy into mechanical energy. It operates on the basis of the Stirling cycle, which is controlled by gases with variable temperatures, usually helium or hydrogen. Such a 1 kilowatt thermal generator can be used to supply a submarine with electricity. To save simplicity, the submarine project does not imply the use of a separate auxiliary orbital spacecraft. Its use requires the construction of an additional reactor, as well as engines. So, our dedicated crew, consisting of six people, is ready, as is the submarine. We begin our descent. Already in orbit, we will see that Titan is comparable in size to Mercury and even slightly exceeds it. The dense atmosphere of this satellite consists mainly of nitrogen and methane. During the descent, you will notice that there are also clouds on Titan, from which it can rain. The methane cycle on Titan is similar to the water cycle on Earth, but not as rosy. Methane evaporates and condenses into clouds, from which rains fall, feeding reservoirs, but it is better not to walk under them. Your instruments show that under the ice crust there is a global ocean of liquid water, characterized by increased density and extreme salinity. Most likely, it is a brine, 
but without cucumbers, which include salt containing sodium, potassium, and sulfur. Also, the ocean contains a significant amount of ammonia, about 10%, acting as antifreeze, lowers the freezing point of water. The strong salinity of the subsurface ocean makes it almost impossible for life as we know it to exist in it. However, deep below the surface, and in lakes, and in seas with liquid hydrocarbons on the surface, there may be life using a different chemistry. At the same time, Titan may also turn out to be a lifeless world. To find out for sure, we need to dive into the Kraken Hydrocarbon Sea with a length of 1,170 km and an area of about 400,000 km squared. A little more than the Caspian Sea on Earth. In the northern part of this sea is the island of Maida. Perhaps the locals live there. During the descent, we are once again convinced that Titan has low gravity. The gravity on this satellite is about a seventh of the Earth's. If the Kraken Sea is as deep as early analyses indicate, and if the composition and temperature of the satellite's atmosphere are taken into account, then all these factors can create a problem for deep-sea exploration of Titan. In this case, the nitrogen in the ballast tanks can condense into a liquid, which in turn will lead to an unexpected loss of buoyancy of the underwater vessel, and we will simply go to the bottom, and this is sad. But do not panic, one of the solutions to this problem will be the use of special hydraulic pistons in the tanks, which will help fill and empty the ballast tanks without relying on air pressure, as it happens in conventional submarines. In addition, our bathyscaphe is made of materials that will ensure its buoyancy and viability in difficult conditions. And electronic systems and other equipment are carefully protected from the cold and hermetically separated from the aggressive environment. It was not without innovative devices and systems adapted to work in such extreme conditions. We continue our descent. Our radar of the seabed recorded a depth of 35 meters near the river mouth. Further, radar echo is not observed for 200 kilometers, which indicates either a depth of over 200 meters in this area, which is indirectly confirmed by steep banks, or a large absorption capacity of the liquid. We notice that along the coastline on Titan there is a sedimentary layer left by evaporated liquid hydrocarbons, which indicates sharp fluctuations in sea level. We are one kilometer from the surface of the sea. The temperature outside is minus 180 degrees Celsius. It's cool, but we don't have to worry, because the Stirling thermogenerator will convert the resulting thermal energy into mechanical force and then into electrical energy to power the submarine, systems and equipment. The use of such a power source presents a number of advantages over other types of energy. It will not only provide the submarine with the necessary energy for operation, but also protect the electronics used here from freezing. It is so cold on Titan that when operating in an almost cryogenic environment, the excess heat of the generator will cause the formation and boiling of condensate. Now it doesn't seem worth caring about. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Our Titanic boat is on the surface of the sea, everything is working properly. We'll be here for a while. During the daily 16-hour work on the surface, the submarine will transmit messages to the ground and simultaneously conduct surveys of the surrounding area with a camera mounted on its mast. The stunning picture of the surroundings is accompanied by a fantastic view of Saturn on the horizon. But our mission is not over yet. In a few hours we begin the dive. What will we find at the bottom of the largest sea of Titan? Naturally, these will be various hydrocarbons, consisting mainly of methane and ethane. Already at 10 meters of depth, various geological processes and chemical reactions occur, which can lead to the formation of complex organic compounds in hydrocarbon seas. And, as a consequence, the seas can potentially contain or support life forms based on other chemical principles. Hydrocarbon mollusks. Why not? The main thing is that the acid cracker from Lovecraft does not drag us to the bottom. Our sensors record the detailed chemical composition of the liquid, 
surface and subsurface currents, mixing and layering in the local water column, as well as vibrations from the bowels of the satellite. It is quite possible that the hydrocarbon seas may be the remnants of the gaseous disk from which Titan is formed. The study of the composition and structure of the sea will help to understand how this process occurs. A few weeks have passed, and we have extracted a lot of valuable data. Exploration of the hydrocarbon sea on Titan using a submarine. This is a huge breakthrough in our understanding of the cosmos and the hypothetically habitable nature outside the Earth. We are aware that such research has not only expanded the horizons of our knowledge, but also showed the firm conviction of the scientific community in the search for a new life and answers to numerous questions. All this has become possible thanks to breakthroughs in technology and, of course, our desire to explore and understand everything that surrounds us in this amazing world of space. Our mission has come to an end, however, the devices are on the verge, it's getting cold, and the orbiting spacecraft that was supposed to pick us up is out of order. The next one will arrive only in a few days, and it's only now that we realized that putting a team on a submarine was not a very good idea. And yet we survived, although not all of us, but that's a completely different story.